Smith. It's free. And it's safe. Joey wanted some catnip. Very badly. Let's try. Truly handsome. Look at him. Sitting there. Been on the bench for a month. But Joey knew he had to find some catnip. He's doing strike work. I've been on the bench for a month or more, but Joey knew one friend was one. Oh yeah, yeah. No, not not Stewie. But oh yeah, I remember now. Suddenly had the good catnip. There was no doubt about it. Clack was the sauce. But he wanted the best of the very best. And Clack was a nearby comfy in his bed. So perhaps Joey should knock on his door. I'm sure Clack wouldn't mind. Go ahead, give him a call. Patch controlled a big chunk of the catnip trade. Patch only dealt with a wild river nip, the kind preferred by most. And dealing with Patch meant not having to go through humans. Joey's connection. But Patch relied on Benny and Lenny for his supply. And Benny and his gang uh, dealt with Mississippi mud nip and Lenny uh, mostly had the Madagascar wild variety. Uh, they call him Mad Lenny for two reasons. And Pax was looking for Joey. Seems he owed Joey a lesson for farm pavement. Joey had to get to Clack. First, he had to settle the patch. So, Patch and Benny's gang were looking for Joey. Uh, Joey might have to take the scenic route to Clack's place. Cutting up is a serious business for all concerned. The customers and the dedicated ones on the supply side. And Patch was dedicated for sure. And Joy had one ace up his sleeve. And he probably needed to play it any second. And that ace was the seductive Lola. Lola was next door. And if he was Quick and lucky, Joey could explain everything to Lola. Joey knew, at least he hoped she would. Lola was temperamental, and Joey leaned on everybody he could. Lola was Joey's only shot. The patch had one weakness. Was the honey Lola was a honey indeed. Lola, Lola, you must help me. We've done everything together all this far. Let me guess. You want a favor. What else would it be when you be sweet talking like that? Well, Lola, my princess, you underestimate me. Actually, I came to give you a favor. A very big one. Yes, I gotta see. How many favors are you behind? You're behind in your payments, Joey. 
because it seems like I've been doing all the favors for quite a while. But hey, like I said, just I gotta see. So go ahead, Joey. Tell me about your favor. Well, now, Lola, you know I always look out for you. And I have just looked out for you. Uh, come to my show. I'm doing the fur ball, the fur ball, uh, the fur ball Ritz on 45th Street, the fur ball club. Uh, my very special friend's gonna be there. This cat has the ability to make you famous. He's looking for a big star for his next project. It's gonna be in the show tonight, Lola. Stop by the club. I got his picture right here. Uh, make sure he has a good time. That's so, all. I was doing you a favor, Lola. If you're not too busy, come by the club. It's gonna be a really good show. have a history, you know. Uh, humans do too, you know. Uh, we just didn't write it down. Uh, and you did. What's up with that? You know, as predators, uh, write down history wasn't an immediate thought. You know, we do what we want and get our own lunch. Well, that can take a while. Yeah. Lunch is about five hours. That's five hours you had to write down your history. We don't have. Think about what that do as a predator. Write down our history? Pretty soon we'll be able to document kills and have registration forms and nobody have time to eat. You know, I mean, humans, they're just different. Well, start with the hands. Look at your hand. You've got something on that hand. It's called a thumb. And that's a game changer. Yeah, you can grip almost anything. There's hardly any direction, any amount of pressure you can't apply. You can open jaws. You get the picture. Thumbs come in handy. I could get my cousin Lenny to go over and break your thumbs and see how you do. Uh, 20 to 1, I'll give you a, a week. I mean, assuming you could get the front door open, this is not a guarantee. We've been working on it for quite a while. Uh, so let's say you don't get the front door open and you're stuck in your house. Well, you could maybe use the phone to call a contractor to build a larger pet door, but Thumbs come in handy. I don't have to tell you that. You know, I said humans are different. But raccoons have thumbs. But I don't see them making iPads. No, thumbs come in very handy. But humans have many more differences than that. You're like space aliens that landed. And we come into your ship. And when we come into your ship, we are trying to help you. Obviously, it won't fly anymore. Maybe we can help. You know, cats helping humans started way back. You know, we were mousers. You know, being a mouser is kind of like working at Burger King. You know, it's fast food. But, uh, long history of cats and humans working together. Uh, how many of you in the audience have cats? I assume quite a few. Yeah, over there. One guy in the back says the dog would be funnier. Oh, but, uh, so those of you who have cats, understand cats, 
Uh, think about it. Uh, how many arguments do you win? Uh, be honest. Uh, we don't like to lose arguments. We don't like to argue, but we're pretty good at it. Uh, we have a way of establishing what we want. That's really important. And uh, it's all the humans, but it's a, it's a symbiotic relationship, and it, it's worked out well. Uh, not quite as well as it has in Turkey, but cats in America are generally doing well. You know, we don't consider you an uh, enemy. Uh, we're more like Switzerland. Uh, we're neutral. You know, so being neutral, well, we can't really care. Uh, uh, and plus, we don't care. But humans and cats have worked together for a long time. But I still feel obligated to let you know you're slipping. Your biggest advantage was the thumb. We talked about that. And now you're going as fast as you can to hands-free technology. That's throwing away your advantage. Now, it's not necessarily that the thumb is that important. I mean, you don't want to be all thumbs. That's not good. But the thumb and the forefinger gives you another dimension, and you're throwing it away. Hands free devices. Guess what that opens the door for? I guarantee you, your cat could order a pizza. Now you did good with the treats, putting a screw on lid, especially the good stuff. Well, that's a good idea, because we, the thumb. But leave that lid off that thing, you might as well throw it away. I don't want to ruin your night, thanks for coming, but think about it. Think about it really hard. Do you really believe that your cat could not order off Amazon? Do you really think he couldn't? Yeah. Uh, we should get Mr. Beast on that and make a video. The cat orders a pizza. Or the cat orders living room furniture. Because I believe it could happen. Uh, you're heading in the wrong direction, but never stop your enemy when he's making mistakes. So Joey had the show of his life in more ways than one. One good thing that Lola and Pat seemed to hit it off really well and left the club, the furball club, the best of friends. Buying Joey at least another day before receiving uh, the wrath of Pat, which was imminent and most likely would have occurred at the show. But Lola stepped up to the plate and bailed out Joey once again. But as Joey went back to his restaurant, there was a stranger waiting for him. We'll tell you about him in the upcoming episode that you can watch right here. Uh, as we are producing this catnip caper uh, exposition of the underground, the underbelly of the catnip trade that Patch has dominated, they're always coming up with new varieties of catnip. Uh, Mississippi mud is the favorite. Madagascar Mad Cat, a close second. However, as the writers have asked me to appeal to the listeners to name another variety of catnip, the best suggestion will be incorporated into the script of the show. 
as a friend of the show. And thank you so much for listening. This episode of Catnet Capers and the Furball Club. For now, good night.